Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. I am not one of the talking heads that you see on your screen. I will be your host this evening. My name is Diane. And I did want to let you all know that there is a handout available to go along with this evening's presentation. And you should have gotten a link to that in your email reminder. If you need to go grab that, you can get that at jandlaura.com slash romance.pdf. That's J-A-Y-A-N-D-L-A-U-R-A dot com slash romance dot PDF. And that is all lowercase. So um, with us tonight, our presenters, Jay and Laura. Hi, Jay and Laura. Hi, Hi guys. guys. How is everybody? Yeah. Hopefully all of our guests tonight can see you both. Also, just by point of information, Laura and I are in the same house. We would be together if our technology allowed us to. We've got to have these little microphones here, and when they get too close, they get uh, they feedback. Like so I am sitting in our home office. You can see our library behind me, and Laura is in our family room with the fake tree with light. <laughs> All right, so are we, are we all yes, good? Yes, I think we are good to go. So all right, take well, it away. We really... Uh, you know, as Jay and I were talking about doing webinars, and, and we just love this. This is fun because it's like, you know, we just saw John and Holly less than a month ago, and now we, you know, we're not really seeing you, but you're getting to Kinda. see us. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> um, but <laughs> we thought, you know, what a better time to do webinars than the month of February because I don't know about you guys, but <coughs> epic fail happens here on this side of this relationship at Valentine's Day because I'm just not a good... I don't know what to get, Jay, for Valentine's Day. You really don't have to get me anything. I know, no, we're not going there yet. Okay, That's not the first tip, so don't jump ahead. Um, it's the most know, important so tip. We started thinking, how many people really struggle with, you know, Valentine's Day every every year? What do I get? Jewelry, cologne, you know, <laughs> something practical, something impractical? And the question came up, why do we make such a big deal about Valentine's Day? Yeah, I know the Hallmark cards do and all the businesses, but this is something we should be, if we're married, we should be celebrating Valentine's Day every day. So we thought for this webinar we would talk about seven tips to have Valentine's last all year long. Because so, Laura, Valentine's yeah. lasts all year long for her. It does. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have one romantic guy. There's no question about That's that. It. You got it. You guys figured it out. So the first tip is with the letter R, and that is to remember. You know, memories are huge, and I don't know. Um, I don't know how many of you that are on today might have been on our cruise, but I know John and Holly Kiffmiller were on our cruise here just in the last the Marriage Cruise 2015. And they were great. They were great memories. We had great. We ate dinner with them one night. We had a really good time. And those are great memories. And memories are huge to reflect on. We, our daughter is graduating in May. I have to say May because it is May 31st that she will graduate. And so I'm putting together. I'm getting together pictures for like a slideshow and a memory book and stuff like that. And it is so fun to just look through all the photos that we have accumulated over the years. And I'll go and show. Hey Jay, look at this. Remember when we did this? Remember when we did this? And it's just fun to have a good a good laugh sometimes to remember how skinny we used to be. <laughs> you know, all those fun things. But also looking to the future too and looking to the next phase of life because it, it's going to be fun. We're going we're gonna to have a really good time. But also one of these in remembering is, you know, when you go out on your dates, take pictures. You know, selfies are huge, but don't take them just for Facebook. Take, take them to, in order to have them to reflect on and to look back on. You know, whenever I clean out my photos on my iPad or my, my computer. It's fun to just look through them and then I store them somewhere, but to just look through them and remember those times. So the first tip for keeping Valentine's all year long would be to remember. That's right. And the second tip is to offer. To offer. And um, guys, there's nothing more sexy to some of your wives than for you to offer to help with the housework. Nothing sexier than a man who vacuums. In fact, there was a study on USA Today um, that talked about men who vacuum and help with housework have sex 30% more often than men who don't. So simple running of the vacuum cleaner could really boost your sex life. And so uh, the offer goes both ways though, ladies. Um, we really want to emphasize something here. <clears throat> One of your husband's greatest needs is for a companion. He really wants a wife who is his companion and so men love it when you offer to do things with us 
that are important to us. For example, watch the ball game. Um, I don't have to have Laura watching every moment of the Lions game, but if she's in the room with me and I'm like, oh my goodness, look at that play, and she can watch the replay, that means a great deal to me, and she can still read her book or do her, you know, Facebook Pinterest. stuff or whatever. Pardon, <laughs> Pinterest, yes, Pinterest. <laughs> um, it, it's funny. I, I love it when she uh, helps out in the in the yard with the the lawn furniture or anything like that. And, and really, the thing that's that's most important in this offer area, ladies, and this one's going to be hard for you, okay, um, is to offer to go with him when it comes to his hobbies. You don't have to go all the time, okay, but offer to go with him. I love to bird hunt. I love to hunt uh, pheasant in particular, and um, I've got a friend who has a, a shooting range, a clay range, in his backyard, and uh, nothing more fun than shooting clays other than, you know, killing birds, but um, <laughs> uh, Laura came with me one time. And she had a ball. She, uh, did you not have a ball, Laura? It was a blast. That's it was for a, sure. It was <laughs> very arm, good. <laughs> her arm wouldn't move for the next week. <laughs> she, she kept leaving the gun too far from her shoulder. But it meant the world to me that she would I was afraid would go. it was going to hurt me. <laughs> and it did. It did. Um, but uh, it, was, it, it was amazing that she would offer to go do something with me that brings joy to me. And uh, one of the things, too, that... Um, that uh, she is committed to, and again, it's just once a year. Okay, it's not like it's got to be you know every week, ladies. But uh, you know, every so often, if you offer to go do something with him, one of the things Laura has committed to that is very exciting for me is that every year on our cruise, she agrees to do something adventuresome and on one of the excursions. We've gone snorkeling, we've gone parasailing. That that was really that the was adventure. Scary. The adventure because uh, the only way she agreed to it was if we would go double because uh, they had you could go double uh, together you know in the same little harness thing and we get out there and she's all excited and then the the guide goes well I've got some some news it's not good news or bad news but um, we don't have enough wind today to go double so everyone's gonna have to go single. <laughs> I was yeah. not a happy camper. <laughs> Until after you did it. Until after it was all done and yes. I loved it. I and would go again. Fun. <laughs> so to, to keep the romance alive throughout the year, remember, make those memories. Offer to do things with your spouse that are meaningful. Guys, help with the housework, fill up her car, those kind of things. Ladies, go and, and have fun with him. And then M, M stands for make. And it doesn't just mean make, it means make a date with each other. Um, I'll never forget we were in Finley, Ohio doing a date night and uh, it was an interesting scenario. We were, it was a kind of a community event, not a church event, and so we were at the local high school and we were in the cafe gymatorium, <laughs> okay? Yeah. So there was a stage on one side and then the gym floor and then bleachers up back <laughs> and uh, the place was packed, absolutely packed. And uh, the floor was packed, the bleachers were packed, and there was a can light that that shone down on this one elderly couple. They had to be like, oh my goodness, they were oh eighty in their eighties at least. They were very old. And when we when we stood them up to dance, no lie, when we stood up to dance, we could see him perfectly. This old man put his hand on his wife's backside. <laughs> low on his wife's backside and started squeezing and I'm just thinking to my myself that dude's my hero and that lady is my hero because she's letting him do it right here in public. Well after the show we're signing books and this guy he, he just these spry guy he's you know really quick on his feet he walk, walks over to me and his wife walks over too and I said hey you guys and they said great show I said I saw you too and she looked at me and she said don't you never mind. That's what keeps him young. And I thought, you know, it's true. When you make time for each other and you make that romance together, when you make those dates together, it keeps things young. It keeps you young. That same man looked at me and he said this, Jay, remember, what you did to get her is what you need to do to keep her. <laughs> That's great advice. And what I did to get Laura was to wear uh, plaid plaid shorts. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that was yeah, that was it. He uh, won't we, wear those anymore. Though. We were preppy back in the day. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so think about this right now. Okay, I'm going to just pause for a second, and I want you both to answer in your head. What did you do to get your spouse? What did you do to get your spouse? Did you take her out? Did you laugh at all his jokes? 
Did you kiss passionately? I'm betting all those were true. What did you do to get your spouse? It's what you need to do to keep your spouse. And the best way to do that is to date. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, it's easier for you guys. Your kids are older. No, it's not easier for us. It's never easy to date, okay? <laughs> because Lori doesn't want to go to McDonald's anymore, so I can't have a cheap date. Exactly. <laughs> and so, no, it is. It's always a challenge to date, but put it on the calendar. Make it happen. So we've got remember, offer, make a date, and the A in romance is for assist. Now, this is for you, gentlemen, and Jay kind of already alluded to this, but women love it when you offer to assist them around the house because it, it is, you know, to vacuum, to dust, to do the dishes, to give kids baths, to put kids to bed. Um, change dirty diapers. Change dirty, yeah, we had an understanding. I did the diapers. Jay did the vomit. I wasn't going to do any of <laughs> that other stuff. Worked. And what we have, what we have seen as our as our kids have gotten older, we still do stuff together. You know, he he we don't he doesn't vacuum or or dust, but he does dishes. We cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner together. That is really fun. We have really started enjoying cooking it's all almost those like together. foreplay guys it is almost like for it could be foreplay Ooh, woo. jay does lot we do the laundry together. it's really kind of funny because i'll go back to you know fold a load of clothes and he'll come back and go what are you doing it without me for i'm like because well, i can do it without you but it's just kind of a pattern now that we've gotten into and he offers to assist now here's what i know <coughs> because i hear women say this all the time my husband would know how to do a load of laundry. He wouldn't know how to run a vacuum cleaner. He wouldn't know how to do... And I just feel immensely blessed that my husband knows how to do all of that, and we do it together. Now, again, you guys may be saying, Jay and Laura, you guys do everything together. You work together. You do laundry together. You're together 24-7. But you know what? You don't have to do everything together. But on those times when, you, when you're sitting in the, in the kitchen or at the dining room table and your wife gets up to do the dishes, just go in and start helping. You know, what can I do to help you? Can I load the dishwasher? Can I wipe the counters? Can I, you know, maybe I should run the vacuum cleaner. Could I take the kids and read stories to them? Whatever, but, but offer to assist because Jay is right. It is foreplay. And it also adds to that team concept that we are huge fans of and that being one where you are you know you are one flesh one body one person and you're operating as one unity and one unit and it really does that assist really does uh, help in that in that area. and in these two areas of offer and assist um, you might be thinking well that's not very efficient use of our time mm -hmm. doing all this stuff together and you're right it's not but it's the most effective thing you can do for your marriage and so you really have to balance being effective versus being efficient there are things we need to be efficient in granted but your marriage, you need to be effective, so you have to make that time by offering and assisting each other. So we move on to the N, the N, notice, notice. We wrote a book called He Said, She Said, and we asked couples what they needed to hear from each other. Uh, what's the, the biggest words, you phrases you need to hear from your spouse? Well, as we were doing the survey, excuse me, we asked one random question. We, we just thought, ah, oh, let's ask it. And we said, if you could change one thing about the opposite sex, not just necessarily your spouse, but if you could change one thing about the opposite sex, what would it be? Gentlemen, overwhelmingly. <laughs> I mean, like 96% overwhelmingly. Women said, we wish men would become more aware. And you might be saying, what? Huh? Aware? More aware uh, of your surroundings, more aware of what's going on with your wife, more in touch to notice more of what's going on when it comes to your wife and her life. This is how you show her that you love her, by noticing that haircut, by noticing that new outfit. By noticing that maybe she dropped a couple pounds, you know, and, and, and she's feeling good about it, but she wants you to notice so that she can feel even better about it. Don't just see these things. Say them to your wife. It's hugely, hugely important that you say the things you see. And when you do, you will begin to capture her heart. Now, here's something else, okay? Uh, not Valentine's Day, okay? Valentine's Day, yeah. you take care of that, take her out to dinner, do something nice for her. Um, but reality is, throughout the year, 
you need to find an excuse to do something for your wife just because. You see Laura shaking her head? You yeah, see I was wondering if you were going to tell this story. Yeah, just because. Um, one, uh, it was the middle of winter a uh, number of years ago, and um, I just, on a whim, while Laura went to get Grace at school, and I think she also maybe went to the grocery store, I went to the flower shop. And I got a big bouquet of flowers, and I took it into our, our kitchen, and I set it on our little uh, eating area in our kitchen. And Laura and Grace got home from uh, school, and Grace, she must have been in junior high at the time, she turned and looked first in the kitchen. She said, Mom, who died? <laughs> she, she's, she's funny. And uh, Mom was like, I don't know. Let's go look. Well, <clears throat> pardon me. What I had, all I did was on the card, I mean, it was like, you know, March 12th or something. I don't know. And I just said to Laura, love Jay just because. No intention, no hoping for later. It was just because. And um, Laura tells the story that she and Grace sat there and admired the flowers and talked for a, a good long time. And then Grace said, Mommy, I wish that, uh, I hope that I get to marry someone just like my daddy who loves me just because. I wish I could tell you I do that often. I don't do it often <laughs> enough, okay? But do something just because. Notice your wife. There we go. So next we have the C, which is chuckle. Now, this is not hard for us, okay? It is not hard for us to laugh. Uh, it's kind of how God made us. Um, I'll never forget, uh, we used to make our, our family dinner table a fun place to be. And one time, Laura, when the kids were very young, hold on. Jay's fighting a little. I'm fighting a little. Gah, 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 gah. <laughs> uh, when, when the kids were little, uh, Laura made Jello Jigglers for dessert. Now, if you don't remember or know what those were, that was Jello that had hardened, hardened to a point where you could cut them in squares and you could hold them in your fingers and eat them. Well, being the goofball that I am, I'm like, well, let's play a game. Let's see if we can play a game with the Jello Jigglers. So I took a Jello Jiggler and I stuck it right here. And um, Tori saw it first, and so he stuck his right here. And then Grace saw it next, and she stuck it right here. And of course, Laura's busy eating and talking and not paying attention to the rest of us. She finally <laughs> saw it. And she said, What are you doing? What are you doing? I said, I just invented a game. Okay, we're going to see who can get the Jello the, the, the jell Jiggler into their mouth. <laughs> without using their hands. And so we're all contorting our face and trying to get it down and, you know, and catch it with our tongue. And we laughed for 20 minutes. It was amazing time. Finally, everyone got the Jello Jiggler in their mouth except for my dear bride, <laughs> who never could do it because she has a really long nose. It just kept going right <laughs> off the end of it. I could never get it to just slide. But if you have problems having fun, because fun is important. It is important to laugh together. Subscribe to daily emails. Subscribe to Facebook pages, Mikey'sFunnies.com. Mikey'sFunnies.com. Good, clean humor every day, both on Facebook and, and through email. And just give yourself a laugh. Uh, go to YouTube and, and you know type in funny videos <laughs> because it's important to funny laugh. Funny animal videos or something. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's important to laugh and do it with your spouse so that you laugh together because I'm convinced there's nothing more romantic than hearing your spouse laugh. So chuckle together. We also try and find a sitcom to watch every oh, week. You know, some fun, funny little 30-minute sitcom that we like to watch. And with Netflix <coughs> and Hulu and all that stuff, you can pick all different kinds of uh, you know, TV shows to watch that chuckle. So you've got Remember, we've got Offer, we've got Make a Date, we've got Assist, we've got, what was the end? Notice. <laughs> <laughs> I have to spell. And then the C, Chuckle, and last but not least, we have the E for Enjoy. <laughs> enjoy the intimacy. Now, we know that marriage isn't, and romance isn't all about sex, but you know what? In my opinion, sex is what holds it all together. And I have really been, I just want to recommend a book to you. Um, I've been reading a book this week by the author. Her name is Joy McMillan. And the title of the book is X-E-S. It's sex spelled backwards because she said good Christian girls get sex backwards. We get it all wrong. It's, a, it's just been a really great read. And here it's is something. It's been great for our marriage, too. <laughs> here is something that she, when she said it, I was like, huh. She said, when we say I do at the altar, we are committing to be each other's 
sole source of se sexual satisfaction <coughs> for the rest of our lives. Since Jay's coughing, I'm going to repeat that in case you couldn't hear it. Because I want to hear it again. He said, when we say I do at the altar, when we stand at the altar and we look at each other and we say I do, we're committing to be each other's sole source of se sexual satisfaction for the rest of our lives. Woohoo! And that, I was reading that yesterday and I thought, you know, that she referred to First Corinthians, there's our telephone. It's probably your mother. She referred, she, we'll just ignore it, it'll ring a few times, but... Uh, she actually referred to the scripture, 1 Corinthians 7, 4 through 5, that talks about don't deny each other unless for a period of prayer. And she's saying this don't denying is saying this is what we're committing to. We're committing to be each other's sole source of sexual satisfaction for the rest of our lives. And I'm not going to get on a rant here, but as I was reading it yesterday, I thought, you know, this is why the Fifty Shades of Grey is so hurtful to marriages because Women are reading romance novels, men might be watching images, and you don't become each other's sole source of sexual satisfaction. You have looked elsewhere, and that really is why things like pornography and, and these types of romance novels and books, you know, amidst all the other stuff of Fifty Shades of Grey, it's because it detracts us from being each other's sole source of satisfaction. So, um, Well, and let me just pop in here, because in, uh, in your marriage vows, or in most marriage vows, there is this phrase that says forsaking all others. And that doesn't just mean in person to person. That means in images. That means in um, uh, thoughts, ladies, that these romance novels put into your head. And I'm not just talking about Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm talking about some of these, you know, steamy romance novels that get you thinking thoughts but not acting on them. So, uh, you know, Laura's right. This is this is great scriptural teaching that we are our our spouse's sole source of sexual fulfillment. And I do think the way God created us is that in a marriage relationship, husband and wife, we are to enjoy each other. Whatever that means for you as a husband and wife, it may be different from what Jay and I mean as a husband and wife, but that is what the E stands for, is to enjoy. <coughs> so we've got remember, offer, make a date, assist, look I'm spelling while I'm doing this, N is notice, chuckle, and enjoy. And that are, those are our seven tips for making you have Valentine's Day all year long. And my apologies for my coughing. Sorry about that. <laughs> and for our phone. <laughs> uh, well, and Kathy Dole mentioned on uh, the question box there that she just bought that book, XES, on Kindle. Uh -huh. And it was just two ninety nine to buy on Kindle. So that's a good, oh, good. good, good piece of information to have. Um, well, at this point in time, Jay and Laura are willing to take your questions. They will answer to the best of their ability. And uh, if you've got any question for, questions for them about romancing your spouse um, so that it lasts throughout the year, all you need to do is on the right-hand side of your screen, there's a box that says questions. You can just type it in right there, and we'll ask Jay and Laura your questions. We don't have any questions at this time, so I that's, that's great. Um, as you think about questions throughout this week, we do have an announcement um, as to what's going to happen just one week from yes. tonight. Yes. We, uh, we did a Facebook post back uh, before the holidays, and we asked, you know, what are the greatest stressors on your marriage? And that's really how we decided to do these, um, these webinars and the ones coming up. Uh, because they were romance, money, and parenting. And so next week, at this same time, we're going to talk about how to make your money work for you in your marriage. We're talking about money and marriage and, and hopefully alleviating some of the stress that money causes in your marriage. So I believe there's going to be a link for you to register. And if, if it's not there, then obviously check our Facebook page and you can register for um, next week's webinar on money and your marriage. And we expect all of you to be very romantic, not only this weekend, but in the weekends to come, the weeks to come. Right. I just actually put the link in the chat box on your uh, go-to okay. webinar. If anybody uh, wants to click on that in the chat box, that link is there. For next week on for money. Week, Nobody yeah. has money issues. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we also 
We also just want to let you know, and some of you um, did this the last time we offered this series, but coming in March, so you want to watch for details, we're going to be offering our Living the Married Life series again. So um, I know some of you may have already done that, but we will be offering that again. So you can spread the word via Facebook to uh, people you know that might be a good thing for them to do. And this is a great program that we've got coming up. We are so excited because it's it's allowing us to help people on an individual basis. Not only do you get teaching if, from us throughout the whole Living the Married Life program, but we take you your uh, personal questions, we ask you for your biggest challenges, and we help create a roadmap for you and your spouse. That's right, a roadmap uh, to battle your personal challenges that are unique to you, and we've got time-tested material that can really help you understand how you can map out your future. Great. So is that it? Well, Linda uh, Bujant, I hope I have it. Uh, massacred your name there, but Linda has say, said thank you. She appreciates yeah. this evening, and hopefully everybody else has enjoyed the, the time as Thanks well. Thanks for joining us, Linda. Thank you all for <laughs> joining us, and we will hopefully see you next week. God bless. Great. Good night, everyone. Good night.